Hey photographers, my name is Spiros Heniotis and this is where I answer your photography questions and we learn about photography together. Now last week in part two of our dynamic range series I told you I was going to show you how I took this image on the left and turned it into this image on the right and that's exactly what we're going to do today. I also told you last week how easy it was for me to do that and I think you're going to be surprised at just how easy it really is. Before we jump into it a couple of quick things. First of all I shot this image in RAW and and that's really important because a raw image file has a ton of extra information and that information is what I'm going to use to make all the edits I'm going to make. You could not do this with a JPEG file because the information is not there. Now if you're not sure about the difference between raw and JPEG you can click this annotation here to learn about that. And the other thing is I'm not going to spend a ton of time talking about the actual editing tools in Lightroom and what they're doing to the image. I've got a whole video that explains that in depth so you can check that out here here if you'd like to. So we're in Lightroom in the develop module and the first thing I'm going to do is make an exposure adjustment to brighten up the image a little bit. I'm going to take the exposure up to plus 0.6. I'm just going to type that in real quick and what that does is it brightens up the overall image. I've essentially overexposed the image a little bit. Now I could have done this when I took the actual photo but I didn't and I didn't do it then for a good reason. If you look in the upper corner of the screen here you can see that I shot this image at 1 25th of a second ISO 100 and you can't see the aperture but it was set at f3.5. Now when I took a test shot in the field at 1 15th of a second which would have brightened the photo the same amount as the adjustment that I just made, this brightest area of the sky was starting to get overexposed. And that's why I didn't use 1 15th as my final shutter speed. Because if that area is overexposed, there is no information there that I can use when I'm here in Lightroom making my edits. And I wanted and needed that information to do what I'm about to do. Now even though I brightened the image here in Lightroom, I still have the information in that part of the sky that I need to do what I'm about to do. And that is the power of raw. It's really fantastic. So take a look here at these next four changes that I'm about to make because this is where the magic really happens. I'm going to start by taking the highlight slider and I'm going to take that to minus 100 and when I do watch the sky and the colors in the sky as they get darker and richer and more textured. Now I'll just go back and take it back and forth again so you can see the difference. And now I'm going to take the shadow slider and take that to plus 100 and watch the upper right hand corner of the image. This is awesome. Just look at all that color and detail that comes into that area. It's just fantastic. I'm going to take the whites and go to minus 100, which is a very similar adjustment to the highlights, but it's going to be much more subtle. Look at the sky and you should see the colors getting a little bit darker, but not like super dark and rich. And finally, I'm going to take the blacks up to plus 100. Now this is really going to flatten out the image. This, as I said, is the power of RAW and it's awesome. If you remember from last week, the darkest area of the photo was at 3% and the brightest area was at 96%. And it was having that information there that allowed me to do what I just did. At 0% and 100%, there wouldn't be any usable information. These four tools, they take that information and they bring out the colors and the details and the texture that's hidden there that we can't initially see, but they can't do it if you don't have usable information there. Now at this point the image is looking a little bit flat and we're going to take care of that but first I want to show you something. Here is the original and the copy that I've been editing side by side. And you should remember from part two that the maximum dynamic range of a digital image file is from pure white to pure black or from 0% to 100%. And we know in the original on the right here that we have percentages of 3% to 96% and that is a high dynamic range. There is a large difference between the darkest area of the image up here and the brightest area of the image in the sky. And what this does is creates contrast in the image. The greater the dynamic range of your actual image, the greater the contrast will be in that image. Now in the edited version, we have different percentages. And let me just go back so I can zoom in. In the darkest area, we've got percentages of around 26, 27% here. And if we zoom back out and go to the brightest area, we're looking at percentages of around 77%. And what this means is that this image has a lower dynamic range. There's not as much difference between the darkest area of the image and the brightest area of the image and that is why this image looks as flat as it does. It's not very exciting because there's not a lot of contrast here. So what I'm going to do next is I'm going to take the contrast slider all the way up to 100 and watch what happens to the image. 
look at the contrast that comes in and look at how much better it looks by adding all of that contrast. After doing that now, the darkest area of the image is giving us readings of around 15% here. And if we jump to the brightest area of the image, we're going to see we're sitting at around 87%. By increasing the contrast of the image, I increase the overall dynamic range of the image. So we started with a high dynamic range of 3% to 96%. That's a pretty wide difference. And then we had 25% to 77%, which is the lower dynamic range. There was a smaller difference, and that gave us a pretty flat image. Finally, by increasing the contrast, we got 20% to 88%. And that dynamic range is very close to what I want the final image to look like. Now, the point of all of this was to show you how important important dynamic range is to how your image looks and feels and how dynamic range and contrast are tied to each other. But I want to make clear that there is no correct dynamic range for an image. It all depends upon what you're photographing and what you want the final image that you are creating to look like. In this particular case, this image and the dynamic range of 20 to 88 percent is what I want and need. So we're going to proceed from here. In the next adjustment, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the clarity slider and I'm going to take that up to plus 39. And when I do that, you're going to see more contrast added to the image, but it's going to be in a subtler fashion. So just take a look at that. I'll take it way up so you can see the extreme measure of it, but what I'm going to do is settle in at about 39 right there. And then I'm going to take the vibrance up to 37 and the saturation to 11. And this is really going to make the colors pop for us, which is really nice. I'm just going to type it in there. 37 and then I'll just type in the saturation at 11 to make those colors nice and bright and, and stand out. And this is what I want the image to look like. The colors are nice. We've got good contrast. It's dramatic. It feels good. I like the energy of this image now that I've made these adjustments. It's really awesome. So the last few things I'm going to do are just going to be details. I'm going to sharpen the image and do the noise reduction. So I'm going to move on down and I'm just going to punch in my standard sharpening of 47 and we're not even going to bother to zoom in. But I am going to zoom in when I do the noise reduction because this is something I want you to see. Look at how noisy this area is right now. There's a lot of noise here and that's not awesome. So I'm going to start by taking my luminance noise reduction setting up to 34. And when I do that, look at the difference in the image. That's pretty dramatic isn't it? Take it back to zero and look at how noisy that gets and I'm going to take it up to 34 again and look at that. It really cleans up the noise. Now you got to be careful here because too much of this, if you go too far, it's going to really destroy details in your image. So don't go crazy with these noise reduction tools. I'm just going to punch that back down to 34. And then I'm going to take the color noise and I'm going to take that up to 50. And there we go. Now again, you got to be careful with these noise tools because you can destroy detail. And there's still noise here, but I'm okay with the noise and I'm okay with the detail of this image. So I'm happy with this and I like it. So that's all there is to it. And certainly it took me some time to explain it to you, but when I actually edited the original photo myself, it took me a matter of minutes to make those adjustments and get this image to look the way that I wanted it to look. The important thing was that when I was out taking the photo, I knew what I wanted the final photo to look like. So so I captured an image that had all of the information that I needed so that I could create that photo using the tools at my disposal. All right, guys, that's all I've got for you this week. If you have any questions about RAW and JPEG or about Lightroom's editing tools, you can click either one of these annotations right here. If you have any questions about dynamic range, leave them down in the comments below. Don't forget to like this video, subscribe to my channel, and most importantly, get up out of your chairs, get out there, take some damn photos. I'll see you guys next week. Get out. Ah!